Okay. Uh, good afternoon, guys. I'm going to share my screen. So just to give you guys a intro about myself, um, my name is Hinoch Talei, and I was uh, with Pin Academy during Batch 5 as a student. And I currently work as a model of a data ops engineer. Uh, my role mainly involves data engineering and uh, data engineering in DevOps. And now some uh, data analytics and stuff. So today I'm here to talk to you uh, about a tool called uh, DBT. And then me, yeah, uh, we're going to talk about uh, DBT. It's uh, like short for a data build tool. And uh, within a data pipeline, it's mainly used for uh, data transformation, like making the T within an E, an ELT pipeline, and extract load and transform pipeline. So you start with some uh, source uh, data store or source, some source system that you take data from, which is the extract step, and then you load it into your uh, data platform of choice. That can be uh, some cloud storage or some something hosted on a local infrastructure. So once you've uh, extracted the data from the source and then loaded it, loaded it into the data platform, uh, and the final stage would be to make transformations as uh, like your, your as your uh, stakeholders uh, see fit, meaning based on some uh, data contract or some agreement uh, between uh, you and the users of the end users of the data to transform the data from its raw state into some uh, final desired state that will be used by uh, other people or which you would serve to other people with dashboards or just the tables themselves. So that's uh, where DBT comes in. It allows you to make those transformations in a uh, like uh, at a very higher level uh, uh, of code. Meaning, when you write the SQL code for the transfer the transformations, you wouldn't have to worry about lower level stuff about uh, table creations, like how you would update uh, tables when some uh, source data changes, or uh, yeah, you wouldn't need to you don't need to worry about uh, a data definition language and uh, data manipulation language of SQL. You, you would work at, at a higher level on the business uh, uh, logics, and then DBT would take care of the lower level stuff for you. So that's that's like its main appeal, as it abstracts uh, all that lower le level logic, and you would uh, be free to work on the business logic. So the, the main things. Uh, you build out with DBT are called models. So when you take the raw data from its raw state to a third state, you're building out different models of the data by uh, cleaning it, augmenting it with some other uh, other data, and in also making some other uh, aggregations or changes to the data types, different transformations. So those things you build out uh, are all called models and. These are just SQL files, dot, uh, dot SQL files. They all mainly start with just uh, a select statement, and then you uh, write out the query to build out uh, the model. So uh, another thing uh, was on DBT. So uh, when you when you uh, build the model, what you finally want is some. Uh, some table that you can serve to other people. So the way that uh, the final table gets uh, created is within DBT terminology, it's called uh, materialization. So that means how uh, the final module is, or any module within the data pipeline is uh, generated is called materialization. You have uh, different types of materializations. Uh, there is a view, uh, view tables and a bunch of other uh, 
types of materializations under the table, which uh, one of them is incremental materialization. Uh, but we, we won't go in, in, uh, in depth into all uh, those. But I just wanted to highlight that there are different materializations for your uh, models. So by allowing us to focus on uh, the higher level analytics uh, or the business logic of the data, it also frees us to have our uh, uh, like model building code uh, in a like modular modularized way. This means they can be uh, like freely re reused if we write a general enough uh, model at the lower stage of our transformations. We can take that, uh, we can reuse it uh, or feature down the line. Uh, models that we might that we might have so that's like one of its uh, appeals and it also uh, we'll see this in the like, uh, within the code but it also takes care of d dependency management so if we were not using uh, dbt and we uh, were building out some large data pipeline that transforms data uh, on with different uh, stages so uh, it takes the data from source, it builds some model uh, at the first stage, and based on that, it, also, it does another transformation and builds a second stage. If, if that was done without DBT, we would need to manage uh, the dependency within this pipeline uh, by ourselves, or we might have to we might have to build some uh, dependency management tool for that. But in the case of DBT, it, uh, it internally uh, manages its dependencies because it's uh, using some uh, in Java templating to specify uh, uh, to refer to other uh, DBT models that you, you've already created. So all that stuff gets taken care of uh, for you. So as uh, instance, it's just uh, .sql files. You can use any version control system uh, you, you might want to and uh one uh, like on the cloud version it's uh, like it's very easy to hook, hook it up to a, a, a github repo or a github repo and then it would uh it would be version controlled like all the models you would build would be uh version controlled and if you follow like best practices uh, when you write out your dbt models your like as you go building the documentation for your data models, this is like the, the schema for uh, every table and how the tables relate. If you follow the best practices you uh, and write uh, the, the configurations properly, that configurations uh, get uh, turned into a simple documentation that people can use, like other people, other teammates, or anyone that wants to understand the data models you're building can uh, glance at and easily have a good understanding of the uh, pipeline you've uh, built. So those are those are some of the benefits. And the other thing is like it's uh, it's testing. So as I mentioned earlier, you, you might have some uh, data contracts between you and a stakeholder that uses uh, the modules you build and like they will provide you some uh, specifications of what the final results should look like, and tests uh, tests are, tests are what you would use to make sure the models you're building out are uh, in accordance with uh, your data contract. So this can be simple stuff like uh, uniqueness of some primary keywords in your table or some column and not being null, and you, you can also build. Uh, like uh, logical tests that compare, for example, two models and see if uh, like we haven't, let's say, generated some data that shouldn't be within the, the final table. So uh, the testing uh, functionality helps you like be aligned with the data contracts you are working under. And the other uh, concept is. is just data platforms. 
So uh, in the case of TLC, uh, in the case of any LC or retail pipeline, you're going to have a data platform. That's just your storage layer where uh, your data lives. And it can be cloud-based uh, systems like Snowflake or some uh, local installation of Postgres. But it's just where your data is going to uh, live. And DBT is going to be connected uh, to the data platform. And whenever you build out the, you build out the models and materialize them as either views or tables, it's going to use the same uh, data platform. Or you can specify any uh, uh, another target data platform, but it's going to use your data platform to materialize uh, the models. So uh, for different uh, data platforms, uh, there are uh, adapters or uh, plugins uh, that that are used to connect DBT to the data platform, and you might need to separately install uh, the the plugin with dbt so it, we will see that in the in the demo but uh, the shell adapters are listed here postgres uh, azure bigquery and yeah th there's also a community supported adapter for uh, mysql so it's just a way to to allow the dbt to talk to your uh, data platform of uh, choice so uh, yeah, what am I missing? Yeah. Uh, is there any question so far? Is, is there anything you want to ask before we move on to uh, the code part? Yeah, you can ask in the chat or just unmute and Okay. Okay. I I'll keep my eye on the chat, but I'll move on to the code part. Uh, I found this like a, there. There's this uh, data engineer that I uh, follow on LinkedIn, and he talks about uh, tools and career stuff. So uh, it's uh, I'm going to share one of his. Uh, blogs on DBT. It's, it's very short. Oh, and there is a question. Yes. Uh, so Abraham asked if data lineages are created using uh, DBT. Uh, it's uh, yeah. We'll see that in the demo. But as you build out your models, uh, you'd write some uh, some configuration files. So those get turned into the documentation, uh, which I will later show you. And one of uh, the parts of the documentation is the data lineage, how the source tables get transformed along the way into the different models you build out. And yes, so DBT does build your uh, data lineage. And this is the blog, and I'm going to sh stop this. And yeah, hope it's not too small. Uh, so uh, let's uh, try to build the story around the data. So the the Data platform here that, that uh, we're using is going to be uh, Postgres, and it's going to run within a Docker container. And 
it's going to take some uh, like raw data from CSV files, and just this is just uh, like data in a CSV file, and then build out tables within the warehouse. So that that's uh, done using just a SQL file. It's just a bunch of create table uh, statements, and then at the end here there are some uh, copy statements that take the CSV files from uh, this directory and then and dumps that their data into the tables uh, within the Docker container. So and the uh, and the other uh, so that's just uh, to have a working uh, a working ground to, to play around with. So let me just mm. oh. oh okay. So yeah, <laughs> another thing is that this make file it's ju it just shortens the commands that uh, you frequently run into aliases like this. So if I want to I stop all the containers that are running right now. I'll just do this and and yeah, the, it, it's just it's just a way to uh, that you specify underneath the aliases. And for, uh, right now, I want to bring up all uh, like these two containers, the Postgres database and a dbt image that I'm uh, building from the local directories here. It's going to use this container's uh, directory, and then uh, and then it's going to use the dbt directory within the repo. So yes, yeah, you can think of them as uh, macros. Uh, it's going to use uh, another uh, directory within uh, the repo. And then mount it into uh, like the container that's going to be built uh, using the context specified here. So that's just a that's just a like a Docker file that's in here, which starts from a Python image, and then uh, uses a requirement file to install dbt. Uh, dbt dbt Postgres. This is the the. Uh, the plugin, the adapter that I was telling you guys about. And this, I don't think you should worry too much about this. It's a way to have a, a, a DBT documentation built with a different tool, I believe, but we're not going to see that for today. But yeah, that's uh, like this DBT image would be built based on this. Uh, Docker file, and then it would attach the uh, dbt project directory within the container. And then the rest is just networking stuff, uh, exposing the ports on my local machine and allowing uh, the two containers to communicate by making them run on the same network. And so, so that, that's just to uh, have an infrastructure where we can work on. So, Mm, I need up the containers again. I'll just use makeup, and they would just run Docker Compose up, uh, build, and then it will run it in detached mode. And if I go Docker PS, you can see uh, that both containers are up and running. So when you start a DVD project, you would go uh, like after uh, installing it with pip, you, you would just type. Uh, dbt in it, and then it would ask you to fill out some uh, form of what your project uh, would look like. This is going then uh, to be used to create configuration files. But since, since uh, like I already have that directory, uh, we're not going to go through that. It's just going to build out uh, this directories here. It's going to scaffold the directories and the configuration files uh, based on the like parameters you specify when you type uh, the dbt in its uh, command. 
uh, one thing that's going to be different if we're going to if we're taking it out locally is when you do this uh, unless you specify the profiles directory to somewhere uh, else if you just run a dbt in it like uh, one particular file is going to be created within your uh, home directory inside the home directory under dot dbt and the profile file is uh, where you store the connection configurations to your data platform. And it, this is mainly done for security reasons, like not to, so as you, so, so that you don't expose the configurations, like the credentials and stuff uh, when you push uh, this uh, code to uh, GitHub. But for this case, it's just for demo. So the way, uh, if you ask why this profile is file is here is because it's great when the dbt init command was run it was created using the profiles directory cloud and that's why it's uh living here so yeah the once the once you finished filling the form the scaffolding is done and you get a bunch of directories mostly empty and some uh, yaml files so the main yaml files are the profiles dot yaml and the dbt project yaml the profile.yaml is where you specify the connection with your data platform. Here, for example, I'm uh, using Postgres, so the type is Postgres, and I have the connection parameters here. And the database name is dbt, and the schema I'm going to work on uh, is going to be a uh, warehouse. So this, like this profile that you specify here is where dbt would uh, materialize any module uh, that you build inside uh, the modules directory. So when you run uh, dbt run, every module that gets materialized would live within uh, like the target you specify here. There are some ways you can override this when you run uh, dbt run, but you can uh, explore that on your own. It's just simple. It's just when you run the dbt run, you specify a target, uh, a target parameter and then tell it the target you want to choose for. So if this was like a, a de development and production scenario, you would have a, another entry here where you specify the production configurations. And when you run your command, you would, you would specify the target profile to choose. And yeah, that's um, all about the profiles uh, file. It's just a way to, to tell dbt the configurations to use to talk to the data platform. And the other one is the dbt project. This is the main configuration file for your uh, entire dbt project. So you, ha you have the name here, the dbt project name, which is also the directory name here, uh, in here. And it, you also tell it which profile uh, it should use. And you also specify the different configurations you want for your uh, various modules, like under the uh, modules. So this can be things like uh, how you want a particular table to be materialized. For example, uh, we'll get to this later on, but I like to materialize all my staging uh, uh, modules as views instead of materializing them as tables. And yeah, we'll talk about this later. But the, this this file is it, it's where you specify configurations for uh, for like modules, snapshots, seeds, like anything you want to specify. Uh, you can like put it in here and yeah uh, the other main thing uh so as i said most of those would be empty they would just have a dot getting more file within them but the main thing we're going to focus on is the modules directory so we have like uh, we already have the data extracted from uh, some source uh, systems, in our case, it's just CSV files, and we've loaded it into our uh, data platform of choice, which is our 
Postgres database. And we have already completed the EL step. And for the T step, that's where we build out the modules. So uh, in, in here, you can specify, you can create like directories to have uh, separation between the uh, different states you build your modules on. In staging, I like to uh, create modules that modify the source data by only changing like stuff like uh, column names, for example, if you look at this one. So this is changing, uh, this is making sure that it's it gets cast as uh, an integer and it's renaming the the column name to uh, like a simpler ID. This might be something that your uh, like future company has like as a, as a standard or some standard you might create yourself. But the the staging layer is where I like to do all the standard or the standardization uh, for all the data I'm going to work on. And then I like, so I, I make the column renaming and that's the type conversion to the types I want. And that would give me some, um, like base layer to work on. So the thing the, about the staging layer uh, is th there will be a one-to-one -one correlation between the staging layer uh, .sql files and the actual tables within your uh, within your uh, data warehouse. Uh, if we look at um, GDCL, we look at the tables within here, for example. GT uh, so from the CSV files, we have three tables that are created in the warehouse schema, and we have three uh, staging uh, staging modules. So, so yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I want to say, that, that there's always a one-to-one -one correlation between your staging layer modules and your like raw tables within your data platform. After that, you can uh, combine and uh, like build out uh, different modules uh, as you want. There, there doesn't need to be a one-to-one -one correlation. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the queries here. So the strange thing you might notice is this syntax here. So the way it works is uh, you're just saying source and then uh, Sorry, I'm looking at some questions. Ah, okay, I'll just continue. Uh, so the way this uh, source uh, function works is it takes configurations you put in uh, other YAML files, like the uh, source underscore uh, ETL tool YAML file, and it, it tries to find the actual like table name from here. Uh, and then uh, it will, when the, when this code gets compiled, it would convert this into the uh, database dot schema dot table name. So in, in our case, if we look at the source uh, file, we're saying uh, I want all uh, like uh, sources I'm going to use to be named uh, warehouse. This is just the name that I'm going to refer them by. And then within there, I have. Uh, one, two, three tables. Yes, three tables. So do I have customers, orders, and the state table. And I'm specifying the like schema. I'm documenting the schema for the uh, source tables. And this is the stuff that finally gets turned into uh, the documentation page. So in, the, in this source, we have warehouse as the name and the table name is customer. So when we refer to it, it's uh, for orders, for example, it's source, warehouse, and then orders. So th this is, but like this source directive is just for uh, con uh, accessing the source directories or uh, accessing other, um, let's look at uh, this one, for example, or accessing other modules created by DVT, uh, modules that are not within the like the raw data, we would use the ref directive and we just give it 
the name of the module we created uh, like before this or we want to create so for example in the smarts directory we uh, there are like two directories and if we look at uh this one this based on this, uh, the staging directories and it's uh it, it creates like a ct with the customer's data and the state data and it adds uh, the state information to the customer um, information uh, using the like, using the drain statement and th this data is enriched by the like customer and the state table and uh, on the like marketing table we're reusing this this model by referring to its name the uh, customer like the customer dimension table like using the ref directive and then uh, and then it, it doing any other thing we might want to do here it's uh, joining the like the orders table with the customers so to, to associate uh, different orders made by the customer with the actual customer information uh, like in, instead of just showing the customer id so yeah and so the idea is to, we started with some raw tables that uh it looked like uh, it looked like some, something like this and we've uh, end up with uh, like different models that uh, that, that we write with uh, dbt without us having to write the DTL and DML uh, SQL stuff. So uh, let me uh, jump into mm. let me jump into the dbt container and I think the files are in in here so that's uh, docker compose or from you earlier so it's mounting uh, this like the dbt project directory into the opt scd directory so that's uh, how i'm getting there so in here i have all the stuff you see here and i can run dbt run and And this will uh, like read uh, each um, module file, and uh, okay. It will read each module file, and then build out materialize uh, each uh, module into the, the data platform, and uh, in a way that doesn't violate. Uh, uh, dependencies that I've specified. For example, here I've said use this uh, dimension customer and uh, this fact orders uh, table. If we look at the uh, steps that it takes to materialize the models, it would first materialize the dimension customers uh, table and then it would materialize this fact order. And then after that, it would go for the customer order. So without me have, not having to specify this order, it would figure out the order by itself and uh, it would uh, do just uh, it would uh, create the materializations so uh, it's not supposed to be certain but so just like uh, the customer order uh, that I was telling you about is materialized after the fact order and the dimension like the customer dimensions uh, tables so yeah in in a nutshell that's uh, that's dbt like uh, the other yeah the, the other thing like i mentioned incremental materialization so 
uh, when uh, let me start from uh, view materialization. That's where it would just cache the SQL query, uh, and then when you uh, ask for the model, it would run the query on the data platform and then return you the data. And in case of tables, it would actually uh, create the table and store it in the data platform. And when you uh, do this again at a later time, it would delete if the table exists and recreate it. But if you have like a large enough data, that that's, um, it causes problems, it causes uh, like high resource usage. So there is the uh, incremental materialization where you would, where DBT would figure out based on your specifications what changed from the source tables and then do your uh, transformations only on the tables that changed and then uh, do some uh, append or uh, updates on the final tables that you might already have without having to delete and recreate the tables. That's uh, one of the um, interesting materializations within uh, DBT. Uh, it also has like other cool features, which uh, to be honest, like, feel like superpowers. One of them is the snapshots feature where it allows you to create a time series, like a time series uh, data set based on your, um, based on your, based on a table you might have. So. In this case, for example, there is this uh, customer's table. So it's just the customer's information. So there are some things that might change within this, but that don't change uh, frequently enough. For example, if they move to a different city, that's called like, uh, the, the, so that volume might change at a later time. But to capture that without having to, uh, do some like crazy change data capture pipeline or any other complicated stuff. DBT allows you to write uh, queries like this with uh, like where, where you specify the uh, how it's going to take the, the snapshot of the data. So it would uh, right now we're uh, we're telling it to use. Uh, time uh, timestamps, which already exist within this uh, table, it's using the updated timestamp to take the snapshot. And if that uh, timestamp changes, it will uh, it will take the, the like the new entry and then put it into the the snapshot module it creates. So this gives you uh, um, for if you have like a a table that's uh, overwritten on the source. So if this was like a live database, when the customer changes something uh, on their uh, entry, this would change the live database's uh, entry. But if you take the snapshots with DBT, you have the change history uh, uh, for you to do some uh, like interesting analytics uh, on those changes. So yeah, that's, that's uh, one feature of uh, DBT. I, I didn't go uh, like into that on the demo, but you can explore that on the blog that I that I shared. But yeah, that's one uh, cool feature. The other seats, I don't see the directory here, but you can start from files. Uh, like here, you can put it in the seats file, for example, if you wanted to put uh, the CSV files, and then you can start your tables from uh, with dbt seed. So that's another thing you can explore. And it's it can also be used for bug filling. So if you have some time series uh, data you're creating with uh, snapshots and let's say your pipeline failed and you missed a few days. And if you uh, recreated those missed days uh, like manually somewhere else, you can just uh, put it in the like, feed and then it would repopulate the, like, the missing uh, parts and yeah, it's it allows you to work at, at a much higher level than you would have to otherwise, and it gives you like it frees you up to focus on the uh, business logic and also provides functionalities like the snapshots, the seed, the incremental materialization, which are like 
crucial as your uh, data size grows. So, yeah, uh, if there is any other question regarding DBT, please feel free to raise them. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, we started with some extraction job and then we loaded the extracted data uh, into some formats that's, that, that are, like a database is able to recognize because sometimes the data <laughs> might not make sense to just dump it into a database. So you might need to do some uh, augmentations on it. But we've already completed those two steps. And we used DBT to make our transformations, which is, so we finished the ELT, the extract, load, and transform. So the final stage, once the data is in the format that uh, our end user is to in, is to uh, serve it into with a, like, an easy to work with platform. Those are uh, BI uh, tools, business intelligence tools. Uh, we have some questions. In quality of data reporting transformation or models. Okay, yeah, that's oh, I, that's in the taste in the taste that you that you write. So, for example, if you go to the question is, uh, uh, last what are what about checking quality of data before doing a transform or model? And when you specify the, like the schema for your uh, data, you can write out tests within uh, this uh, description. So for example, for the orders table, I'm saying uh, the order ID, the order ID column should, not be, uh, should never be null and it should be unique. So if somewhere along the way I messed up and wrote some uh, SQL that creates duplicate values or uh, creates null values. Uh, when I run the dbt run command, uh, no, if, when I run the dbt test command, I think, yeah, it, it says uh, like uh, failed instead of, uh, instead of this. So you write them in the source, uh, un source underscore uh, files. So, so this source underscore file can be within any model directory and you just uh, yeah you just specify it's either uh, the source file or you can have uh, that's for the staging layers and for higher la layers you can have the schema.yml file where you specify uh, documentation and also tests and abraham uh, so we have a csv file that has a time series on it can you show us some transformations or how uh, time series? So, mm, I'm not sure if I can uh, like show what types of transformations you would use on your data because I'm uh, so. Uh, are, are you able to fit the data as it is into a table, Abraham? Okay, can you like uh, dump the CSV files into a table? And I don't see my profile. Oh, uh, Jara said uh, that they couldn't see their uh, profile.yaml file. That's because it's uh, probably stored in your home directory inside a directory called uh, .dbt and so it should be at uh, .dbt and I last how do we track the lineage of that? Sorry, <laughs> forgot to show that. Uh, so uh, 
dbt so we can generate the documents with dbt docs here and generate and then we can serve it with dbt doc serve since i already forwarded the port 8080 on the docker compose file to my uh, local machine i can just open this on my browser and you can't see that <laughs> let me stop this mm. and then all the uh, the configurations we wrote here get turned into this beautiful documentation where you can see the different module specifications uh, you can see their uh, schema the query that was used to generate them and for your question you can see the uh, data lineage like this so we started with uh, let me clear this out that was a bad idea uh, Okay. Let me add. For example, for the snapshots, we started with the raw table and we created this uh, snapshot table for it. And for uh, let's look at. Look at the name. Yeah, let's look at this uh, custom customer order uh, table that was in the marketing directory. So we started with the orders table, and then we uh, did uh, some manipulation in the staging layer to it, and then we had the uh, uh, fact orders uh, calculated. Then we put this into the final the marketing table. So we had the uh, customer orders table. So yeah. It, allows you to see how your data got transformed along the way and you can you can uh, click on like any of the nodes and then uh, go through their uh, individual documentations so yeah that's one other thing i forgot and um, are there any other questions Uh, yeah, you can speak. Okay, thank you for giving me the floor. While installing DBT, uh, yeah. I has uh, I has been asking some question. Okay, after running a DBT in it, so those question was uh, a database name, uh, uh, the user name, and other yeah. information. And, yeah. at, and at the end, uh, I think those information are in the uh, profile that we have file. So yeah, that's correct. Okay, when I run, okay, um, a DBT run comment, uh, I got an error. So my question is to know uh, for the database name, for instance, if I can just put the the uh, I mean, where uh, the, the name of the database where uh, my my CSV will be loaded, or if it is necessary, uh, Postgre that we put over there. So I I don't know really how to manage that uh, profile. That uh, yeah, so we can help it to be very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you've already created the profile that uh, YAML file and it's it's not connecting. So uh, when you run DBT run, it's giving you some errors, right? Yeah, I mean, I didn't put uh, post gray. I just put the uh, a name because it asks where where they put the type. I think it is the the database name. 
not a, uh, it's the like the data platform name so this uh, the type is for for this case it's postgres if we were on the cloud it might be snowflake this is just like generic the product type name it's not the database name the database name is uh, db name oh uh, okay the uh, does answer the question um let me see a little bit of screen. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so whenever you want to 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 set up uh, a DBT, the tab should necessarily be Postgre. Or it can be it, changed sometimes. It, it depends on what what that.